In our Sunday school lesson last week, we took a look at Christ being the head over all things, including, yes, the church. He is the head of the body. And as the head over all things, Christ, he reconciled all things to himself. That means that he restored to harmony all things that are in heaven and all things that are on earth, all things that are righteous and the things that are of sin. We now have an opportunity. We who are sinners, we have an opportunity to turn to Christ. We have an opportunity to take the path of glory. Will you take advantage of this opportunity? That is something that I have been preaching about for the past month or so now. Getting on track, being right with God. That is something that we'll see Paul touch on here in our Sunday School lesson today, where we're taking a look at being complete. So before we even jump into the scripture of our lesson today, I would ask all of you, what does it mean to be complete? When we think about being complete, we think about something being finished, something being done. If there was a puzzle and the puzzle was completed, we would say that all of the pieces of the puzzle, they have been put together in the puzzle, rather than being incomplete, the puzzle has been made whole. All of us today, we are souls and our soul must be made whole. And the only way that our soul can be made whole is if we turn to the Lord. The Lord will put our shattered soul. That's what sin does. Sin, it presses down on our soul and it will crush the soul. And many of us, we walk around today with our souls shattered, our soul broke. And in order for our soul to be put together again, we must go to the Lord who is able to make us whole. And that is what we're gonna take a look at here in our Sunday School lesson this week. Being made whole, and the only one that can do it is the Lord. Our Sunday School lesson this week, it opens up there in the second chapter of Colossians and the sixth verse, with Paul writing and saying to us, to all of those who have received Christ, he said, we should walk in Christ. We'll see him say there in the seventh verse, we should walk in faith that is rooted, faith that is built up in Christ. You and I, as you have heard me say in recent weeks in my sermon series, you and I, we are walking on the narrow path, all of us who are on the path to glory. And the narrow path is not an easy path to walk. It is a path that is sometimes dark to us. And again, as I have said, we must follow Christ on the narrow path to glory. We must be attentive to him. We must be obedient to his word. You and I, when we walk on this path, there are many obstacles that can hinder us, that try to keep us from following Christ. Those hindrances, I have said to you, are our temptations, sin itself. And so as we walk in this world, we have many things that try to pull us away from our faith in Christ. But you and I, we must walk upright on this journey. You and I, we must again walk confidently in our faith. This reminds me of something that Jesus said in the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel and in the 24th verse, where Jesus, he said in that scripture that those who are attentive to his word are like a wise man who built his house on a rock, on a solid, a strong foundation. And when the storms came and beat upon that house, the house was able to withstand those storms because it was built on a solid foundation. He did not liken us to one who is unwise, those who have not received the words, those who do not live by the word. Jesus said that those who do not live by the word, they're like someone who builds their house on loose, shaky foundation. And when the storms of life, when they come along the way, they topple over that house, that house, it just goes down. Jesus, he likened us to someone who is able to endure. We are able to persevere. Again, when temptations, when, when trials and tribulations, when they come along the way, so long as we stand on our faith in the Lord, so long as we are walking in our faith in Christ, we will be able to endure. We will be able to persevere. We'll see there in the ninth verse here that in Christ who has overcome all things, again, the fullness of the Godhead rest on him. That is God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy spirit. 
There is completeness in Christ. Okay. There is completeness in Christ. And again, all of us who walk by faith in him, all of us, we can be made whole. Again, if our faith rests on him, Paul said there in the 10th verse, he said that when we rest in Christ, again, he said that we become complete as well. Something that many of us do today is we give our trials, we give our tribulations, we give them so much power. We give temptation. We give it so much power. We say, oh, I can't, I can't beat my temptations. I can't get over my temptations. We give the devil, we give him so much power. We, we build the devil up like he is God's equal when he isn't God's equal. God made the angel that fell and became the devil. God, again, he is supreme. He is over all things. He is a sovereign. And again, through the giving of his only begotten son, he showed us the way in which we become holy and righteous. Something that I have said in my sermon series is that when we follow Christ on the path of glory, Christ is always training us. He is always teaching us in the way that is holy and righteous so that we, we transform so that we can become holy and righteous as well. Something that I want you to know today is that the devil, he may have his power, but when you are walking by faith in Christ, you have the power of Christ. Have you ever realized that? Paul, he said that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things. Do you know what that means? Do you truly know what that means? Do you truly understand what that means? Most importantly, are you living by that? Do you believe that? Do you have faith in that? Do you trust in it? You can do all things. You have a great amount of power. So long as again, you are walking by faith and that faith is in Christ. Now at this point here in our Sunday school lesson, there in the 11th verse, We'll see where Paul begins to speak about being made whole, how one can be made whole. Hopefully there is an interest in you desiring to be made whole. Again, as I said here at the start of the Sunday school lesson, something that many people don't realize is that as we are in our nature, when we live according to sin, sin, it weighs down on us, sin, it presses down on our soul, and our soul, it is not healthy. When we are living by sin, our soul is in the worst shape possible. It's something that I preach about today is, again, being made whole in our soul. Our soul has to be right in order for us to walk on the path to glory. And so how, how do we be made whole? How can we be made whole in our soul? Paul, he gives us an answer to that question starting there in the 11th verse. Well, we'll see that Paul, he tells us that one is made whole with the circumcision made without hands. That is the circumcision that is of Christ, which is the putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. This circumcision that, that Paul is speaking about here, I don't want you to be confused. I don't want you to misunderstand what Paul is speaking about here. Paul is not saying that that we can be made whole by all of us being physically circumcised. You know, when we think about circumcision, we think of the cutting away of the foreskin of, of men's genitalia. That's what we, that's what we think of, but that is not what Paul is talking about. Something that was happening within the early church was that the Jewish believers, those who were coming to Christ, they would look at the Gentile believers and they would say, well, the Gentiles, they need to do the things that we did by our tradition so that we could be close to God. They, they really were living by the tradition and they tried to force their tradition on the Gentiles who were not of the blood of Israel. And so we'll see here in our lesson this week that, that Paul, he speaks against that. And the way that he speaks about against that is by focusing in on how one truly is made whole. Again, the Jews, they had their traditions of, of, of circumcision that still, that stood as an outward sign of their, 
being committed to the Lord. Well, Paul is saying, look, those who are not Jews, they don't have to go about doing any of that in order to be close to the Lord, because being close to the Lord has nothing to do with the physical. And so he brings up circumcision here by speaking about a spiritual circumcision. Again, when we take a look there at that 11 verse, Paul, he speaks about the circumcision of Christ, which he said, which is the putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. Again, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week, Christ, he reconciled all things to himself by the giving of himself on the cross. When he died, he died for our sins. He is our propitiation, our atonement offering. And again, when he rose from the grave, he said, all authority is given to me. And again, when we remember what Jesus said to Nicodemus in the third chapter of John's gospel in the 16th verse, Jesus, he didn't say that those who are circumcised will have everlasting life. What did he say in that scripture? I, I believe if I'm remembering right, I believe he said that whosoever believes in me will not perish, but will have everlasting life. And again, that's what Paul began our Sunday school lesson with here today. He said that we should walk in Christ, that we should walk by faith. Faith again is the key. And when you have faith in Christ, he said that Christ, the circumcision of Christ, it will put off of the sins of the flesh. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. Now, Paul, he tells us there in the 12th verse, he tells us that one is made whole through being buried with Christ in baptism. Now, is he saying that that one must be baptized? You know, when we think of baptism, what do we think of? We think of water baptism. You know, uh, Baptists, we believe in, in the water immersion of baptism, and others will believe in the sprinkling of water on one's head or, or the pouring of water on one's head. But is that baptism, is that what Paul is saying that one needs to do in order to be saved? Are you saved if you're baptized? Now, if you have watched my recent sermons, if you have looked at my recent shorts on YouTube, then you know that just because you say that you believe in God, just because you say that you are a Christian, that doesn't mean that you are saved. You should also know that just because you are baptized, just because you're dipped in the water or just because you have water sprinkled on your head or have water poured on your head, that does not mean that you are saved. Don't think that for one second. What Paul is speaking about here, he's talking about a spiritual baptism. Again, he's talking about the, the circumcision of Christ, right? And now he's talking about the spiritual baptism, which is done because Christ died for us. Because he died for us, and because he rose again, and because he ascended, we receive the Holy Spirit. All of us who are of sincere faith, we receive the helper. We receive the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. That's what Jesus said as recorded in the 16th chapter of John's gospel. The Holy Spirit also plays a role in transforming us from that sinful, that old, that wicked person into a new creature. You've heard me say that before recently as well. The Holy Spirit is always transforming us. And that is essentially what baptism is the outward show of. When one is dipped in the water, we are buried with Christ. Christ, when he died, he died as a sinner. When he was on the cross, he, he took on our sins and he died as a sinner. He was buried as a sinner. But when he was resurrected, was he resurrected as a sinner? No, don't think that for one second. When Christ, when he rose from the grave, he rose holy and righteous. So the outward show of baptism, when we are dipped in the water, we are dipped in the water as sinners, but when we come out of the water, we aren't supposed to still be a sinner. But many, when they come out of the water, they, they haven't changed at all, which is why the water baptism, when one doesn't have a change in their heart, the water baptism is vain, is meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. You must have a change in your spirit. And the only way that you can have a true change in the spirit, a true change in your heart, 
is through the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And the only way that one can receive the Holy Spirit is by sincerely having faith in the only begotten Son of God. Now, we'll see here as we continue on in our Sunday school lesson for today there in the 13th verse, we'll see that Paul, he tells us that we are made alive through Christ who will forgive us our sins when we confess our faith. So this has been a major talking point of mine again in recent weeks for, for since January, really, if you've been following me closely, you know that I have been talking about the professed believer and the one who is of sincere faith. Again, there are many who have been baptized. They have come out of the water. They haven't had a change, but they will go around. They'll tell the world that they are a Christian. They'll tell the world that they are born again. But how can you be born again if you haven't, a cha haven't had a, a change in your heart? Again, what is most important about faith, the only way that one can become holy and righteous, the only way that can, one can be saved is through the confession of their heart. Okay. The outward profession that is meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. You have to have that confession of faith. When you confess with your mouth and with your heart, as Paul said, that is when you are saved. And so as we see here in our Sunday school lesson, as it begins to come to a close here, Paul, he said there in the 15th verse, because Christ disarmed principalities and powers by triumphing over them through his physical death. He said that the barrier to life in the spirit that has been torn down. And so again, all of us through our sincere faith, all of us, we can again receive the Holy Spirit. All of us, we can be transformed in our hearts and we can become holy and righteous. We can again be made whole. So again, as I said, there are three ways that we can be made whole, that we can be made complete in our spirit. Now, the first way, again, that we can be made whole in, in the spirit is through our faith, right? Through spiritual circumcision is what Paul said. And again, through our faith, through, through the spiritual circumcision that is of Christ, when we are covered by the shed blood of Jesus that puts off our sins. Now, again, we aren't perfect again, as I said in a recent sermon even though our sins have been put off, our feet can still get dirty. And therefore we must go to Christ and we must let Christ wash our feet every now and then. We have to acknowledge, we have to be humble and acknowledge our wrongdoing, which again plays a, a major role in our being made whole. The second thing there that we have seen here to be made whole, again, there must be a spiritual baptism, not just a water baptism. That water baptism it is meaningless if you have not had that spiritual baptism of your soul. We must again be born again. That's what Jesus said to Nicodemus in the third chapter of John's gospel. We must be washed by water and the spirit. And the spirit is again the most important part here. The third key to being made whole is the receiving of the Holy Spirit who again will lead us into all truth, who again will transform us and will transform us on, on, a, daily, on a daily basis from that old person into a new creature that is holy and righteous. We'll see there in the 16th verse that Paul, he said, let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or, or a Sabbath. Like something, you know, like I said, here at the, the start of the lesson, something that was going on with the, with the early church was that the Jews, they were trying to convince the Gentiles, hey, you have to, to take part in, in our traditions. And there's, there's a lot of that that still happens in the world today with those who, who are new to the faith. There are a lot of old believers that will say, you have to do this, you have to do that in order to be, in order to be saved. Again, what I want all of you to understand today is that all you need in order to be saved is to have faith. You must have sincere faith, okay? You have to confess with, yes, your mouth, 
but your your heart as well. And then there's another confession as well. That confession that is seen in how you live your life. Okay. Again, something that Paul said all the way back in, in one of our first Sunday school lessons this quarter to the Philippians, Paul said to live is Christ. And again, that's something that we must keep in mind when we are made whole. All right. Through our confession of faith with, with yes, the mouth and with the heart. Again, we must live for Christ. We are to be living testimonies of Christ. And so, again, we should live in a manner, in a way that is according to his word. We must live in obedience to, to his word. And again, when we live in obedience to his word, we set the example for all of those that are around us that may desire to be made whole in their soul as well. Paul, he says there in the 18th verse, he said, let no one cheat you of your reward. Again, we are to be steadfast in our faith and we are to be confident. We are to be confident in our faith. Again, when you are of sincere faith, I want you to, I want you to know and understand today that you enter into an intimate, a personal relationship, fellowship with Christ. And again, nobody, don't let anybody try to persuade you otherwise. You know what your fellowship is with the Lord. And so again, be confident in your relationship. Be confident in your fellowship with Christ. Be confident in your faith. And again, walk in that faith. When you walk in that faith, as Paul said, you will be made whole. So that's something that I hope you take away from our Sunday school lesson for this week. Again, there are three ways that you can be made whole. Ultimately, just have faith. When you have faith, you will be made whole. And then again, walk confidently in that faith. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you will take something away from this lesson, that you will apply it to yourself and that you will share it with someone somewhere. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday School lesson next week. Make sure that you're following this channel so that you can get the next notification for next week's Sunday School lesson so that you don't miss it, so that you don't miss the Sunday School lesson, the sermons, the Bible studies, or the Food for Thoughts. Make sure that you're following this channel today.